All right, so I did my first post that was talking about the relationship with, between the hypothalamus, a part of the brain, and the anterior and posterior pituitary, how those mechanisms are controlled. And so uh, I realized that we kind of need to backtrack a little bit and go over a few core concepts uh, as far as endocrinology is concerned. When we talk about endocrine glands as opposed to exocrine glands, exocrine glands are ducted systems. They have ducts. They secrete their products into onto surfaces or inside of lumens in the body. Lumen is just a, a space or a tube inside the body. Um, and so um, that's an exocrine gland. An endocrine gland okay, secretes its product, and endocrine glands produce hormones. And so it will secrete its product or its hormones and dump them directly into the bloodstream. So how do they get where they're supposed to go? There's, there's no shuttle system or duct you know, or transport to take it there. Then how does it get there? Well, it circulates in the blood. Well, again, how does it know which organ to go to? And that's what we talk about target tissues, and, and we talk about receptors for these hormones. Target tissues are tissues that have receptors for that specific hormone. I alluded to it in the last uh, post, uh, talking about the uh, anterior and posterior pituitary, that hormones will bind to receptors that, that they fit. And so textbooks usually make it a very simple uh, picture, you know, a, a triangle fits into a V-shaped receptor. You know, a circle fits into a half circle type receptor, things of that nature. So just, it gives you this lock and key mechanism, which is how it works. It's the same way neurotransmitters work. It's the same way an enzyme binds. It's a sort of a, it's a fit, right? It's a, it's a formation of proteins that fits specific. That's what a receptor is, by the way. They're made up of proteins. It's, it, it fits specifically to that hormone. Well, not all tissues have receptors for all hormones. Some of them do. For instance, thyroxin, which is T4, your one of your thyroid hormones, it has receptors for almost, it's almost everyone in the body has receptors for that because it's, it's a metabolic hormone and all tissues need metabolism. So, and we'll talk about metabolism in another chat, in another post. Um, a lot of people think metabolism is burning calories. Metabolism is all of the biochemical processes in your body. And so, um, when we talk about metabolism, yes, that makes sense that we would need this hormone that controls metabolism to bind to all of these tissues and cells. But then there are other ones that are specific. There's a hormone called ACTH. Okay, it's, it's kind of big and fancy, sounds really tricky. Adrenocorticotropic hormone, that's ACTH. That goes to the adrenal cortex, that's what the AC is. So the names sometimes give away some of the information. Okay. And tropic means to grow or produce or stimulate. And so it's basically going to the adrenal cortex, causing the adrenal cortex to produce hormones. Now, where else do we have receptors for that hormone? We don't. It's an ACTH. It's an adrenal corticotropic hormone. It goes specifically to the adrenal cortex. Now, it doesn't travel directly there. It circulates in the bloodstream. But once it gets to that tissue, and this is how all the hormones are going to work, once it gets to a tissue that has receptors that bind or can fit that particular hormone, those receptors bind to it and pick it up, okay? If, it, if, if the tissue doesn't have it, it passes right by that tissue and moves through circulation to a tissue that does have it eventually, okay? So that's, that's kind of the relationship that we see between hormones and receptors. So I think it's really an important concept to understand that hormones get dumped directly into the bloodstream, okay? So regardless of what hormone we're talking about, it's getting dumped into the bloodstream. You know, we talk about growth hormone. Growth hormone gets dumped into the bloodstream, affects uh, many, many tissues in the body. But the two primary tissues that get affected more than any others are going to be bone and skeletal muscle. Okay? And the reason for this, there's several reasons for it, but uh, one reason is that the, that the receptors there are going to have a greater affinity, because okay? there's going to be different affinity for the hormone. What does that mean, affinity? It means that the receptor fits better. It has a better binding capacity. Okay? So um, it's going to bind better at those tissues, those tissues also will have more receptors for that specific hormone. Because we have three things that affect how much a hormone affects a tissue or the body. And that is how much hormone you produce. Well, that makes sense. The more hormone I produce, the more effect I'll get. The second thing is the more receptors I have. The more receptors I have, the more binding I get of that hormone. And the more binding I get, the more production I get. Now, this is something we'll talk about in the future post. But insulin resistance, that's when insulin doesn't bind to the receptor well. And so it's not going to be able to do its job, which one primary job is shuttling the sugar inside the cell. We'll talk about that specifically in another post. Now, the third thing, so we said we had amount of hormone, we said we had number of receptors, and the third thing is affinity, how well we bind to that specific hormone. So those are the three factors that are going to affect how much a hormone affects a tissue, 
a function, that function of that hormone or the body in general. If you have any questions, let me know. Stay strong. I'll see you next time. Got lots more coming.